Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. However, as many seashells as Sally may sell by the seashore, here's the fact. You cannot, under any circumstances, make a hoe into a housewife. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and motherfucking moan. Dig in your heels and hold on tight. You can shove your opinion up your ass that we Obama's cock has something to keep it company. Either you are wrong or I am right. And don't forget, the ever-present, the most likely, the third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. Not only am I right, I have always been right, I will always be right. Right is the only state in which my opinions can exist. Because I am the great one himself. And this is Stating the Obvious Podcast, the weapons platform, from which I launch the cruise missile of my intellect that hones in on and destroys stupid motherfucking status all around the world. Left-wing status, right-wing status, two-wing status, no wing status, status that glide, status that fly under their own power, nuclear powered status, wind powered status, hippie powered status, dope powered status, it doesn't matter what kind of fucking status you are. You will die under the excruciating heat of the thermonuclear reaction that happens when my fucking cruise missile seeks you out and blows the shit out of you. <sighs> Welcome one and all. Here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, it's fall outside. Rainy, overcast, summer, gone. I don't know what the fuck happened there. It should still be summer. Anyhow, this is Stating the Obvious podcast from Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the interwebs. I am the great one himself. In the control room is the lovely and adorable Randy. You can send us email. God, that's dog spelled backwards. God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. The theme song for Stating the Obvious is You Know I'm Right by David Gilmore. It's off his 1984 album About Face. Those of you not in the know, David Gilmore is the guitar player for Pink Floyd. He is a left-wing socialist who is, of course, very, very rich and could use his resources to help a lot of poor people. But, of course, he doesn't do that because, like most rich left-wing socialists, you know, poor people should be taxed in order to create government functions like the welfare system to help out the poor people by keeping them perpetually poor. David Gilmour, with his billions and billions of dollars, isn't actually going to invest any of his own financial resources into helping poor people because that's not what statism is about. Statism is not about helping poor people not be poor anymore. Statism is, is about perpetuating poverty because poor people need the state to provide for them, whereas non-poor people who can provide for themselves don't need the state to provide for them and therefore serve no useful purpose. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. Speaking of things that serve no useful purpose... Today is the first in a series of podcasts, I don't know how long it'll go, it depends, where I am going to talk about things that serve no useful purpose. We call these things women, females, girls. Now, <laughs> shut up, Randy. <laughs> Randy is a girl, she serves no useful purpose, other than bending over so I can see her cute little butt. Alright, no, seriously. <clears throat> Hold on, I need a drink. Despite the opening joke about girls serving no useful purpose. And, of course, I make those kind of jokes just to piss off any fucking femistatist who happens to be listening to this. <sighs> girls serve a purpose. However, what we're going to talk about in this series is... 
and God knows I made it. Well, if God existed, God would know, but there's no God. So, I made it away from complaining about femistatist. For a while there, I was actually talking about other stuff besides just femistatism. However, we have to go back to femistatism because a number of things have happened. Mm. Which are <clears throat> my inability to talk. And also, okay, so a number of things have happened which I'm going to talk about in this upcoming series. One of them is Emma Watson gave a speech at the United Nations. I still haven't listened to the entire thing, but I'm going to. I heard some excerpts from it in which she, of course, blindly and ignorantly because she's a tool, repeated the usual femme status drivel, which is that women can never be equal until men do things. And this is, of course, the entire basis of the femme status philosophy, is that women are incapable of doing anything on their own because women are objects. And so women have to sit around and wait for men to bring equality to them. And as, if I, as I have argued, and will continue to argue, and will argue over and over and over again, the fact that women can't achieve equality on their own and have to have it delivered to them is all the evidence you need that women are not equal. Right? If you, if men, if the only women, if the only women, if the only way women can have equality is if men give it to them, Obviously, they're not equal. Women are saying, we are objects. We must have stuff given to us. We cannot act on our environment. But they're saying, men must act on the environment to bring equality to women. Therefore, what they are saying is that men, if men can act on the environment and bring equality to women, obviously, men are agents who are capable of acting on the environment. So, men are agents. Women are objects. People who are objects cannot be equal to people who are agents. Agents and objects can never be equal. Furthermore, objects will always be inferior to agents. And I know nobody out there likes to hear that because it's the truth, but it's a fact. Objects, by definition of being objects, are always going to be inferior to agents. Agents can change their environment. Objects cannot being able to change your environment, being able to proactively do things, being able to achieve things, will always make the person, regardless of gender who can do that, will always be superior to the person who just sits there and waits for things to happen. There is a... Christina Horner, who's a YouTuber who I used to like, she did another feminism video and finally just pushed me over the edge. So I'm intending to talk about her stupid little feminism video. And she's got another older one out there that if I can find it, I might, I might make fun of that one also. But what we're going to kick off with, here's what we're going to kick off with, since I find my notes. We are going to kick off with some real life examples. I am going to talk about a series of women whom I have encountered and I'm going to talk about their behavior. We're going to analyze their behavior. And from this analysis of their behavior, I am going to illustrate why women are not equal to men. I'm going to illustrate why women are objects. I'm going to illustrate why women are selfish. I am going to illustrate why women are shallow. I am going to illustrate why women are primarily driven by conformity and groupthink. I am going to illustrate why women should not have jobs, why they should not be in the workplace. I'm going to illustrate why women should not be paid as much money as men. And, you know, this is my standard disclaimer. While I'm going to be generalizing and saying women, yes, I know there are exceptions. I don't give a shit about the exceptions. We're not talking about the exceptions. We are talking about the 99%. And I have in my list of examples here, we will discuss one, two, three, four, five, six. Six women. Personal experiences I have had with these six women. And of these six women, as you will see as we go through this, only one of them displayed integrity 
at any level. The other five, complete lack of integrity. And this will in ultimately feed into supporting my thesis of why women should not be in the workplace. Because if you don't have integrity, why should somebody be hiring you and paying you money to do things, right? When you lack integrity, you should not be given responsibility. Speaking of responsibility, I also take responsibility. I am pretty sure in previous podcasts, notice how I'm taking responsibility for a mistake that I've made in the past right now. This is something you'll never see the typical femistatist or woman ever do. I'm pretty sure in the past I have credited the quote, you can't make a hoe a housewife to the great philosopher Tupac. In fact, in my research today, preparing for this show, I discovered that I was wrong about that. Ooh, I was wrong. But you notice I'm still right, because when I find my mistake, I'm correcting it. I'm not just blindly going forth. That reminds me, I'm gonna, I've picked up again rereading this book called Being Wrong. I've talked about it in the past. And it's, it's a really good book so far. I highly recommend you find this. And the author talks about all the things like confirmation bias and all this stuff. And it's fascinating to read her talking about being wrong and presenting all this evidence and in the process of which being wrong about stuff. So everything, there's a number of things in this book where I think she's wrong. And it's, it's really fascinating, right? She's like, she's talking about global warming and how, yeah, these people who are against global warming are out there looking for confirmation bias. I'm like, no. You're right, but you're wrong. It's not the people who don't believe in global warming. It's those of you who do believe in global warming that are looking for confirmation bias. It's those of you who think that the climate never changed until 1980 when Ronald Reagan was elected. You're, you're the ones looking for the confirmation bias. It's, it's just, and then she also, I just recently read where I just said that I, I talked about this, the exception proves the rule, right? The fact that, yes, when I'm, as today, I'm going to talk about how women are incompetent, how their objects have, how they have no morals, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. And you're going to say to me, well, I know a woman who isn't like that. And yes, my point is, you know, one woman out of all the people in your life, you can name for me one woman that has integrity. The fact that you can only come up with one woman who has integrity tells me that all the others don't. So yes, the exception does prove the rule, as I've said before, because without, if the exception is not an exception, wait, how do I say this? The exception cannot be an exception unless the rule is, most of the time, the rule. And of course, in this book about being wrong, she is wrong when she says exactly the opposite. So anyway, it's a very, it's a really good book. It's a good read. You're not going to agree with everything in there, but it's definitely going to challenge your thought process. It's going to present you with a lot of really good information. It's worth your time. Where's my water bottle? It really is water, not, not a martini this time. All right. Oh, God. And then the fucking vegans. <laughs> All right. And look, and let me kick it off with this. So in the past, I've talked about the breakfast meeting that I go to sometimes where it's independent business owners. We get together, we go to breakfast. And I had bitched before about these, there's these two people, one of whom is a femistatist. Well, they're both femistatist, but one has a vagina, one has a penis. And they're vegans. And they're always talking about veganism and they never RSVP. So they always show up and we're always two chairs short because these cocksuckers never fucking RSVP. Well, on Thursday, we had our little meeting again and they did the same fucking thing. They showed up without fucking RSVPing. And so we're screwed because when everybody who did RSVP shows up, we're two chairs short and now we're fucked. And we all had to squeeze into a booth. 
And this is femistatism. This is how women are, as I'm going to illustrate. They, why do they not RSVP but show up? It's because they're femistatist. It's because they're so fucking concerned and wrapped up in themselves that, <coughs> damn, that they do not understand how their actions or inactions, in this case the inaction of RSVPing, affects other people. Either they don't understand how their inaction affects other people, or they just don't give a shit. They just don't care that they're going to show up and cause the entire group to have to deal with the fact that we are short two chairs. And that's just the selfishness. And that is femistatism. That is the state of mind of 99% of the women around you, especially the younger ones, who are just so fucking selfish and so inconsiderate of other people that they don't care how their actions affect other people. And this is why they are not equal to men. All right, let me start. Let me start down the list. Okay, chick number one. Oh, God, I got a lot of bees in here. Hang on. Not bumblebees. I had a pencil. Okay, I don't want to use real names. I should, but I won't. So I have to give these chicks designators. We'll call them A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let's start with Chick A. So Chick A, I've known her for a while, and we, we've hung out in person, we've done stuff together, yada, yada, yada. Lots of text messaging and joking around and all this other shit. So finally, I'm like, all right, we need to go out and get a drink sometime. She's like, yeah, sure, whatever. So let me know. So we're arranging, going out. And let me throw this in, too, because this is what I'm going to hear. All the fucking girls who listen, you're just, you're just upset because these girls want to have sex with you. No. And as we go through this, I'm going to explain exactly why I'm talking shit about these bitches. And it's not because they don't have sex with me. Again, this is a, this is the female perspective. The female perspective upon hearing what I'm, everything I'm going to say today is that I'm just bitter because these girls want to have sex with me. No, you see, there are 7 billion people on the planet Earth. 51% of them, approximately, are women. I'm not bitter because these individual women will not have sex with me. Okay, Most of the women on the planet are not having sex with me. I'm not bitter at them. Most they're the women I know who are my friends, who I care about and I love and I, who, the ones who I respect. None of them are having sex with me. I'm not bitter at them because they're not having sex with me. And women will believe this because again, this goes back to the arrogance of women. That the arrogance of women says that my problems, not my problems, let me think, how do I say this? Better than saying my problems, because that... The average woman will think that my critique of female behavior and pointing out why this behavior is not acceptable is based on the fact that these females are not having sex with me. No, my critique of their behavior and why it's not acceptable is based on the fact that their behavior is disrespectful, that their behavior is selfish, that their behavior is shallow, that their behavior is obnoxious, and that because their behavior is this way, that's why they should not be working. That's why they should not have jobs. That's why they should be paid less than men because they're worth less than men. Let me see, should I throw this out now or should I do it later? Okay, let me go ahead and address this one now too. The arguments I'm going to make are going to look at 
the shall we call it personal behavior of these women. Now from that I am going to extrapolate that because of their behavior, is, is it personal? Is that really the right way to say it? Private, okay, I'm going to look at the private life behavior of these women. This might be a better way to explain it. And from their private life behavior, I am going to extrapolate and conclude that they should not have public existence, like being politicians or being lawyers or having jobs, because the way they behave in private is going to be the way they behave in public. And the way they behave in private is not the way they should be behaving in public if they expect to be paid money, if they expect to be respected. Now, some people are going to argue with me and say, well, no, what people do in their private life doesn't matter as far as their job goes, because we hear that shit all the time, right? And this is easy to defeat because I say unto you, what about the child molester? Would you say, well, yes, this man, he's, he's the head of our law firm, he's our top lawyer, and in his private life, he has sex with small children. But that doesn't matter, because that's his private life, and this is his public life. Now, at this point, those of you who are statists will say, yes, but having sex with small children is illegal, and therefore that's wrong. At which point, I will point out that what you're doing is you're determining what's right and wrong based on what's legal and illegal, which means that you have no moral compass. Your definition of right and wrong has to be given to you by the government. And of course, this is what statists do. Statists need the government to tell them right from wrong, just as religious people need religion to tell them right from wrong. Right? I've said this a gazillion times. Religious, you know, Christians are people who needed God to write on a rock, thou shalt not kill, in order to know that killing people is wrong, even though God kills lots of people, yada, yada, yada. And of course, statists are people who need the government to make laws against killing people, otherwise they'd never know that killing people is wrong. So no, okay, if a behavior is either acceptable or unacceptable, the idea that you can be so let's forget the child molesting for a minute and go to a less extreme example. Let's say you have somebody who in his private life constantly lies to his friends, constantly backstabs his friends, constantly manipulates his friends and plays them against each other, and sometimes goes to his friends' houses and steals money from them. Would you say, oh, but it's okay for this person to be an employee at this company, or the CEO of the company, or for a lawyer, or a doctor, or whatever, because that's his private life. What he does in his private life doesn't matter. This is work. Would you make that argument? If you would, you should stop and think about if that's really a sound perspective to take on the world. Because people, especially femistatists, will argue all the time that the way people behave privately and, of course, this is one of the big arguments against men. we got to con control men because men try to have sex with women and we can't have that in the workplace. Well, wait a minute. Hold it. If men can go out at night and try to have sex with women, but well, when they come to work, they can't. Well, then you're saying that what they do privately, what they do publicly is linked. Women, on the other hand, especially the femistatists, want to make the exact opposite argument about themselves. They want to say, well, what we do privately, right, posting naked pictures on the fucking whatever it is, uh, Snapchat, you know, acting like attention whores on Facebook, getting drunk all the time, accusing people of false rape, all this other stuff, it doesn't matter. We should be able to get a job and just get paid more money than men because we're so wonderful. No, no, no. Now, when you look at the behavior of the women I'm going to talk about, we're going to see how they are dishonest, how they are selfish, how they are inconsiderate of other people, you know, just like with the two vegans. I mean, these people never RSVP. So if they cannot be trusted to just RSVP, and if they cannot be considerate enough of another group of people to RSVP, why would you hire them to do a job for you. If they can't be respectful enough of their friends to communicate their intention to show up for breakfast, why would you have an expectation of them being respectful enough of a client or a boss or whoever is paying them money to fulfill the needs of that relationship?
Alright, back to Chicky Poo number A. Number A. She A number one. <sighs> so yeah, we know each other, we text, blah blah blah, we've done some stuff together, whatever. So yeah, we can go get a drink. Alright, let's go get a drink. So then we're saying, so, 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 alright, so what about this week? She said, well, I could do something this weekend. One of these nights is my girl's night out, and then the other one, I don't know. I'm like, all right, whatever. So let me know which one. And then finally it comes down to, oh, well, I don't think I'm going to have time because she's got all this Bible study shit, and then she's got her sorority nights out, and then she's all this homework and everything. And it's like, look, Number one, what you're telling... First of all, sororities. Now, I've never had anything against sororities or for sororities in the past. But now, having encountered a couple of sorority girls, I have to wonder about the cult status of sororities. I actually think part of sorority functioning is to keep these young girls so busy that they can't form a relationship with a man. I think this is important to feminism because, again, one of the, the tenets of femistatism is that, you know, men are all fucked up. And if a woman is able to actually form and have healthy relationships with men, she's not going to have any reason to believe that men are fucked up. So it benefits statism for women to be incapable of relating to and forming relationships with men, whether it's romantic relationships, sex relationships, friendship relationships, what the fuck ever. And so I get all these excuses from her about, oh, our sorority's doing a dinner, oh, our sorority's doing a ceremony, oh, our sorority's... It's like, what the fuck? Is this some kind of fucking cult? I mean, do you like sacrifice animals or some shit? What are you people all doing? And the thing that interests me about sororities, too, is that there's this claim about, oh, we're all sisters, and we're going to help each other out, and yada, yada, yada. And I know girls who were in sororities and have now graduated, and most of them are working as waitresses or bartenders. And so I'm just, I just, I really want to ask them, so how is that sorority sister helping each other out thing working for you because you've been out of college for three fucking years and you're still a waitress? I don't really see that happening. So I think the main function of sororities is to keep these girls so busy that they cannot form any kind of friendships with men. So anyhow, girl A, and it's, I'm just like, you know what, I fucking had it. I just cut her off, we're done. Because it's all these excuses. And she, this is her last year of college, and you would think by now, now, now we're going to get to why women should have jobs. You would think by now she would learn to balance her time and manage her time and be able to have a social life in addition to doing all this other stuff. Healthy people, mentally healthy people, you have to do work. You have to create things. And sure, you have to study and yada, yada, yada. But you also have to have time for yourself to do the things you want to do. You have to have your mental health time. You have to have your physical health time, right? For me, it's my trail running. I go out, I'm trail running. Yada. Yesterday, I was busier than fucking shit. I still managed to take an hour out of my time to go trail running. For a person to be a healthy individual, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you have to learn how to balance your work with your needs for the things you want to do and need to do to remain a healthy and complete individual. So the fact that she's constantly busy tells me one of two things. It tells me that she doesn't know how to balance her life so that she can find the time to do something that's important to her, like go out with me. Or it tells me that when she says yes, I'll, we'll go out sometime and have a drink. She's lying. And this is going to be the, the common thread between every one of these bitches, except for the one, is the lying. And you're going to hear this story five times. So here's the first time you hear it. 
She says unto me, yes, we'll go out. I say, great. Then, as I endeavor to set up the actual time for us to go out, she can never commit to it. What do we learn from this? Boys, gentlemen, men, guys, males, listen to me as I explain the female brain to you. Here's how this works. When a chick says she wants to go out, if she's serious, she will follow through. If she doesn't follow through, she's not serious. Now, first of all, understand that women are people, sort of, and they have shit going on, and that's understandable. So, when I say, hey, what about this weekend? I'm busy this weekend. Okay, at this point, if a chick is serious about going out with you, she will make a counteroffer. So, I'll say, hey, chick A, what about we got this weekend? She'll say, no, I can't do it this weekend, but, and then next week is finals week, because it is finals week, and she'll say, but the weekend after that, we could probably do something. See, she will put forth an offer as to when she's available if she's serious. If she's not going to put, if she, you don't hear her offering up an option to make this happen, that tells you she's not serious. That tells you she's lying. So why do chicks say, yes, I will go out with you when they're not intending to go out with you? Here's why. Because, and I'm about to get ahead of myself. Slow down, take a breath. Because girls, number one, do not like confrontation. She doesn't want to say to your face, no, I don't want to go out with you because that's too confrontational. Yet, she thinks she can be a lawyer because there's no confrontation in being a lawyer. Right? This is why women, for the most part, are not suited for jobs above and beyond waiting tables. Because they naturally steer away from confrontation. Because they don't want confrontation. And so instead of confronting somebody, it's not even confrontational. It's just saying, no, I don't want to go out with you. That's too confrontational for 99% of females. So instead, they will lie to your face and say, oh yeah, I'll go out with you. The second reason they tell you this lie about they're going to go out with you when they're not is because, and this is woman logic, and I'm going to say all this and it's not going to make any sense to you. That's because you're a man. Okay, They tell you that because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Because if they think, well, if I say no to him, I'm going to hurt his feelings, so I'm going to say yes and just not do it because that way I will not hurt his feelings. Because they don't really grasp, and again, this is because women are objects, not agents. Women don't really have the mental capacity to understand the future, right? This is why women get pregnant without having enough money available to raise the child, because they don't really grasp the future, right? They don't understand that after the baby comes out of their vagina, it's going to cost a lot of money, and it's going to take time. You know, that this is a full-time thing you have to do is caring for your child. It's because they don't have a sense of future existence. Women exist in the moment right now. They have no understanding of the past, and they don't, they have no remembrance of the past, and they have no understanding that the future exists. Now, what actually happens, of course, is the woman says, no, in the, or she says yes in the moment, but then in the future, by not eventually going out with you, she's saying no via her actions. And it never occurs to her that that action in the future of not actually following through might hurt a man's feelings. Now, of course, some many men do get their feelings hurt by this. For the rest of us, we just understand that, yeah, you know, women are going to flake out. And it's not, and again, it, for, to boys, Right When women say, yes, I'll go out with you, and then they flake out and they don't, that's just how they are. Do not get your feelings hurt by this and fucking whine and cry, because that does make you a pussy. Okay? Understand that, yes, easily 9 out of 10 women who say, yes, I will go out with you, they're going to fucking flake. This goes back to, and also a common, something you'll see in all of this is, in all these examples, these are cases where I got a chick's phone number, and then tried sitting up a, we'll call it a date, for lack of a better word. And I tried sitting up a date with them via text or whatever, and everyone has failed. As I've talked about in the past, 
I, and this still holds true, well, almost. I think there's one or two exceptions. For the most part, every woman I've ever had sex with, I did not know her phone number until after we had had sex. You know, my normal routine is blah, blah, blah. We're talking to the person. What do we have to do to get together? Blah, blah, blah. Say, all right, well, what about this day at this time at this place? We set something up. We walk away. I don't have her phone number. She doesn't have my phone number. I go to that place that day, that time. Either she shows up or she doesn't. And that has worked almost every time I've ever done it almost every time. There's maybe two or three failures. The other, like, I don't know, 10, 15 times worked flawlessly. This whole getting their phone number and communicating with them via text, I really believe it's a total path to failure. And you can go, if I remember, I'll link to it in the show notes. I've linked to this before. Roosh V's blog post he wrote about how women who have smartphones are incapable of love. Right, because when a chick has a smartphone, she has all day long via text message and IM and all this shit, she has all of these men constantly contacting her, vying for her attention, wanting to have sex with her. And by getting her phone number and texting her, you're just putting yourself into this pool of beta male orbiters that she ignores. And that's why, you know, I tried this phone number thing for a while. These, these are the results, as we're talking about. And I'm, I'm done with it. I'm not getting any more fucking phone numbers from chicks. I'm going back to my old way of doing things, which is to set up a meeting in person and walk away from her without either one of us having the other person's contact information. Because the whole text thing, it's a fucking failure. You're lumping yourself in with all the other beta male orbiters. So don't do it. Let's move on to Chick B. Chick B is a waitress at this restaurant. She's a cute little redhead. And I've seen her there a couple of times, yada, yada, yada. So I'm in there the other day, and we're chit-chatting and blah, blah, blah. And I blah, blah, blah. And I'm talking about, oh, this place over here is awesome. And she's like, oh, I've never been there before. And I said, well, shit, I'll take you there. Let's go. She's like, okay, well, when? I said, well, I don't know. When are you available? She said, well, next Wednesday. All right, great. I said, you know, give me your phone number. <laughs> There is the mistake. That was the mistake. See, notice how I can admit that I made a mistake. Try getting a femistatist to admit she made a mistake. Good luck on that. Okay, so the mistake was to say, give me your phone number and we'll set up a time. Yada, yada, yada. So, she's all enthusiastic. She was the one, now see, this started off good because, see, here, she was the one who said, yes, I'm available on Wednesday. Let's do it on Wednesday. As I was leaving, she's like, yeah, I'll see you Wednesday. It'll be, all right, great, you know. So everything started off really positive. Now, what happened was she had time to think about it. She had time to talk to her friends, and she had time to find out what her friend's opinion of this was, and this is where women's need for conformity comes in, right? Women will always be driven by the opinions of their friends. Women are driven by their peer group. Whatever their fucking peer group tells them, this is why sorority chicks... I have decided or fucking work. Oh, so this one is also a sorority check. So she, same shit, the sorority thing. She checked in with her sorority sisters to get their evaluation. And she's not going to go against the group. She's not going to go against the herd. So anyhow, a couple of days go by. Send her a text. Hey, you know, let me know what time you're available. Didn't hear anything back from her. So a while goes by. Then I'm walking down the street and I saw her at the restaurant. I'm like, hey, let's go. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry I didn't text you. It's like, yes, because you're so fucking busy that you can't send a text message, right? Whenever, anytime a chick is not responding to your text, it's not because she's too busy. They live on their cell phones. The cell phone is always there. The idea that it takes some great amount of time and effort to respond to a text message, it no, it doesn't. It doesn't, okay? If she's not responding, it's because she doesn't want to. So anyhow, I see her in person. I'm like, hey, what's up? And blah, blah, blah. Said, Sorry I didn't text you. I'm like, yeah, whatever. She says, all right, well, text me again. I'll get out. No, she said, I'll text you in a few minutes because the restaurant wasn't open yet. I'm like, whatever. So a day goes by, still nothing. So I sent her a text. I said, hey, you know, I need to know what time you want to do this because i got to start planning my week. And she texts back. And she says, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I have a sorority event that night and then my friend is coming into town and I'm just so busy, I'm not going to have time. Sweet, whatever. 
just shut up and drop dead because you're you're gone. You're out. Now this one, again we have the sorority activities which are preventing the sorority members from actually forming any type of friendship or relationship with anybody who's not in the sorority, thus guaranteeing these girls will grow up to be bitter, socially isolated women who don't know how to interact with men. But also the interesting part is she's so busy that she, you know what, hang on a second. La la. La 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 dead air, dead air, not so much. Alright. Yes! Oh god, I'm glad I did this because I completely forgot about this. Okay, I want to read to you the exact text that she sent me. I'm glad I pulled this up because I'd completely forgotten about this part. Alright, here we go. She's nineteen, by the way. Alright, here we go. Oh, hey! Exclamation mark. <clears throat> Hold on. Voice. Oh, hey! Exclamation mark. Sorry. Wednesday, I actually have big little ceremony for my sorority. Smiley face. Oh, no. Frowny face. And a friend comes into town Thursday for a week. So as much as I want to go, I can't. Sorry for the false hope. I'm too busy for anything. Okay, this text says so much. Okay. Wednesday, I... <clears throat> too bad. Too bad I can't say anything. Ugh. All right. Take seven. Wednesday, I actually have... Big little ceremony for my sorority. Frowny face. I don't know what a big little sorority, big little ceremony is. <sighs> All right, a, fr a friend comes into town Thursday for a week. Then at the end, she says, "I'm too busy for anything." Okay. If you're too busy for anything, why is your friend coming in for a week, and why does that matter? If you're too busy for anything, you wouldn't have time to spend with your friend. Your friend is coming in for a week, so one would assume that during that week, you're going to have time to spend with your friend. Now, when the friend leaves, the average amount of time during that week you spent with your friend is the average amount of time you should have available in each other week to do things yet you claim you're too busy for anything. So I don't get this. Now I understand people have certain weeks where they're really busy, but again, you see, there's no counter offer. It's like, where, where, as much as I want to go, I can't. Well, that's a lie. She doesn't want to go because this is finals week. She's you know, because nobody in college learns anything anymore, they just have to cram during finals week. It's, you know, it's memorize, regurgitate, forget instead of actual learning. All right, fine, it's fine. But after finals week, what about then? Right? If she really wanted to go, she would not say, as much as I want to, I can't. She would say, I, re I really want to go. What about the week after finals week? You see how this works? Right? When people really want to do something, they will find a way, they will find a time, they will find the resources to do this. This is a common thing. Right? I really want to do this podcast. That's why even though this week I'm fucking slammed, next week I'm really going to be slammed. Right? I'm busy as fuck. And yet, I'm finding time. Randy and I are finding time. She's got shit to do too. She doesn't fucking sit around all day watching TV. She comes over here, she helps do this. Okay? We're finding time to do the things we really want to do. Yesterday, I really wanted to go trail running. I needed it really bad. I found the time to do it. I made the time to do it. When you, when any person out there really wants to do something, they will find the time to do it. When a chick says to you, oh, I really want to do this, but I don't have time, that is a lie. That is a lie. That is always a lie. It's always a lie. 
it is always a lie. When a man says to you, I really want to do this, but I can't find time, that is a lie. It does not matter if the person saying that phrase to you has a cock or a cunt. That person is lying to you. If somebody really wants to do something, if they really want to do it, they will find a way to do it. I fucking guarantee you. That is what makes a person an agent, not an object is the ability to say, I really want to do this. I am going to find the time and the resources and make it happen. That is what separates agent from object. So in saying this, she's saying she is not an agent, but that she is an object. Now, the other part that I completely forgot about is where she wrote, sorry for the false hope. False hope. It's not false hope. It's lying. When you say to me, yes, we'll go to this place on Wednesday, that's not false hope. That's you being a liar. I was not sitting around hoping. I, like an idiot, because I forgot women are objects, not agents, I naively expected you to follow through. I didn't have hope. I had this fucking crazy expectation that you were going to follow through on what you said you were going to do because you're an agent, not an object, because I forgot women are objects. Because I had this brief moment of insanity where I expected a woman to not be a liar. I had this moment of insanity where I expected a woman to be capable of following through on a promise. And again, why would you bring somebody like this into a workplace? Why would you pay this person money to do a job for you? When these people, when she's announcing, I can't, you know, I say I'm going to do things and I don't do them. That's called lying. Why should this person have a job? I mean, it's okay for her to carry food to tables. She can do that, but she should never be entrusted with any true responsibility because she's a liar. If I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I fucking do it. This is why I very seldom tell people I'm going to do anything. Because in my world, if I say I'm going to do something, other than of course coming on this podcast and telling all these lies about, oh, I'm going to do a podcast episode about this. I'm going to do an episode about that. Yeah, I know you guys, the longtime listeners have heard this all the time. You could probably make a fucking list a mile long of all the things I said I'm going to talk about. I still need to talk about seasteading, I gotta do the one about the rape movie. I gotta do the one about the monkey experiment movie. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, I'm a fucking slacker. And again, see, here's the thing. I can sit here and because I'm capable of being intellectually honest. Watch this. I'm going to be intellectually honest. When the moment comes that I really want to do those episodes, I will do them. I will find the time, I will get the resources, I will make it happen when I decide I am actually committed to making those episodes happen and talking about those topics. Until I actually do that, when I say to you, yeah, I'm really pa I, I really want to make the podcast episode about the monkey experiment. As long as you don't hear the podcast episode about the monkey experiment, you know that I'm fucking lying. You know I'm lying because I'm not doing it. As I have always said, always judge people by their actions, not their words. And I, again, I've, as I've said before, I expect you to hold me to this same fucking standard. Not that you really know anything about my actions, unless you're fucking stalking me in real life. But you know, I, again, when I say I'm going to make a podcast about X, and then I don't make a podcast about X, okay? You can see, you can hear what I said, and you can see what my actions are. I expect you to judge me by my actions as much as you can. Because that's how I judge other people. That's how I judge hot little chicky girl B, who's a really cute fucking redhead. And I'd like to lick her asshole. But she's a liar. And she's incompetent. And she's a liar. And she can't follow through on what she says she's going to do. And she's a liar. And it's like, I, just, I don't have time for this shit. And of course, what is she going to, what is she going to school for? She wants to work with children. I want to work with children. Great. So the children are going to have this person working with them who's a fucking liar. 
And we're going to wonder, why do the children grow up fucked up? Now, of course, I'm running out of time. I haven't even got to Chickie's C, D, E, or F. Chickie C is pretty easy. Met her via the internet, actually, and got her phone number. So I'm like, oh, you want to go? We should, you know, we go out to this place, check this thing out. She's like, yeah, sounds like fun. Give me your number, blah, blah, blah. And then it's the same thing. It's like, okay, do you want to go do this? Oh, yeah, all right, great. So and it's like, hey, can you go this weekend? Nope. Can you go today? Nope. What about this week? Nope. It's like, finally, it's like, all right, again, why do you say, and I've already covered this, why does a girl say, yes, I want to go out with you to this place? Here's my phone number. I didn't, I, I did ask for a phone number, actually. She gave me the phone number. All right. It's like, okay, you say you want to go do this, but you don't follow through. You're not going to follow through. So when you said you wanted to do this, you were lying. Why do you girls out there not understand that when you say to somebody, yes, I want to do X with you, but you really don't want to do X with that person, why do you not understand that you're lying? Why do you think that lying is socially acceptable? Why do you think that I should not be here right now on this podcast calling you out on your lying? Because you know you think that. you Every fucking girl listening to this thinks that I'm a total asshole for calling these girls out on their lying. Why do you fucking dumbass hoes who can't be turned into housewives, thank you, Dr. Dre, why do you fucking hoes who will never be housewives think that you should be able to lie without being called out for lying? And of course the answer is because you're objects. Because you believe the reason you're lying is because of men. Because you see, this is, this is here's, here's your thought process. Why, if those men hadn't asked us to go out with them, we wouldn't have to lie. It's the man's fault. This is why you women shouldn't have jobs, you shouldn't have responsibility, and you should not make the same amount of money a man makes. You have no fucking integrity. You just fucking lie. You cannot simply say, no, I don't want to go out with you. You don't even have to say thanks for asking. You say, no, I'm not interested. And when we come back for the next episode, the first girl we talk about, girl number D, will be the one woman out of six who had the fucking integrity to just say no. And she's the only woman out of this group I have any fucking respect for anymore.